Telecommunication occurs when the exchange of information between two or more entities includes the use of technology. Communication technology uses channels to transmit information, either over a physical medium, or in the form of electromagnetic waves. The word is often used in its plural form, telecommunications, because it involves many different technologies. Early means of communicating over a distance included visual signals, such as beacons, smoke signals, semaphore telegraphs, signal flags, and optical heliographs. Other examples of pre-modern long-distance communication included audio messages such as coded drum beats, lung-blown horns, and loud whistles. Modern technologies for long-distance communication usually involve electrical and electromagnetic technologies, such as telegraph, telephone, and teleprinter, networks, radio, microwave transmission, fiber optics, and communications satellites. A revolution in wireless communication began in the first decade of the 20th century with the pioneering developments in radio communications by Guglielmo Marconi, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1909. Other highly notable pioneering inventors and developers in the field of electrical and electronic telecommunications include Charles Wheatstone and Samuel Morse. Alexander Graham Bell, Edwin Armstrong, and Lee de Forest, as well as Vladimir K. Zwerikin, John Logie Baird and Philo Farnsworth. Etymology The word telecommunication was adapted from the French. It is a compound of the Greek prefix tele, meaning distant, and the Latin communicare, meaning to share. In 1904 by the French engineer and novelist Edouard S. Tournier. History Early telecommunications in the Middle Ages, chains of beacons were commonly used on hilltops as a means of relaying a signal. Beacon chains suffered the drawback that they could only pass a single bit of information. So the meaning of the message such as, the enemy has been sighted, had to be agreed upon in advance. One notable instance of their use was during the Spanish Armada, when a beacon chain relayed a signal from Plymouth to London. In 1792, Claude Chap, a French engineer, built the first fixed visual telegraphy system between Lille and Paris. However, Semaphore suffered from the need for skilled operators and expensive towers at intervals of 10 to 30 kilometers. As a result of competition from the electrical telegraph, the last commercial line was abandoned in 1880. Homing pigeons have occasionally been used through history by different cultures. Pigeon post is thought to have Persians' roots and was used by the Romans to aid their military. Frontinus said that Julius Caesar used pigeons as messengers in his conquest of Gaul. The Greeks also conveyed the names of the victors at the Olympic Games to various cities using homing pigeons. In the early 19th century, the Dutch government used the system in Java and Sumatra, and in 1849, Paul Julius Reuter started a pigeon service to fly stock prices between Aachen and Brussels, a service that operated for a year until the gap in the telegraph link was closed. Telegraph and telephone Sir Charles Wheatstone and Sir William Fothergill Cook invented the electric telegraph in 1837. Also, the first commercial electrical telegraph is purported to have been constructed by Wheatstone and Cook and opened on 9 April 1839. Both inventors viewed their devices an improvement to the existing electromagnetic telegraph not as a new device. Samuel Morse independently developed a version of the electrical telegraph that he unsuccessfully demonstrated on 2 September 1837. His code was an important advance over Wheatstone's signaling method. The first transatlantic telegraph cable was successfully completed on 27 July 1866, allowing transatlantic telecommunication for the first time. The conventional telephone was invented independently by Alexander Bell and Alicia Gray in 1876.
Antonio Mucci invented the first device that allowed the electrical transmission of voice over a line in 1849. However, Mucci's device was of little practical value because it relied upon the electrophonic effect and thus required users to place the receiver in their mouth to hear what was being said. The first commercial telephone services were set up in 1878 and 1879 on both sides of the Atlantic in the cities of New Haven and London. Radio and television In 1832, James Lindsay gave a classroom demonstration of wireless telegraphy to his students. By 1854, he was able to demonstrate a transmission across the Firth of Tay from Dundee, Scotland to Woodhaven, a distance of two miles using water as the transmission medium. In December 1901, Guglielmo Marconi established wireless communication between Street, Johns, Newfoundland and Poldhu, Cornwall, earning him the 1909 Nobel Prize in Physics. However small-scale radio communication had already been demonstrated in 1893 by Nikola Tesla in the presentation to the National Electric Light. Association. On 25 March 1925, John Logie Baird was able to demonstrate the transmission of moving pictures at the London department store Selfridges. Baird's device relied upon the Nitkoff disc and thus became known as the mechanical television. It formed the basis of experimental broadcasts done by the British Broadcasting Corporation beginning 30 September 1929. However, for most of the 20th century televisions depended upon the cathode ray tube invented by Carl Brown. The first version of such a television to show promise was produced by Philo Farnsworth and demonstrated to his family on 7 September 1927. Computer networks and the Internet on the 11th of September 1940. George Stibitz was able to transmit problems using teletype to his complex number calculator in New York and receive the computed results back at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. This configuration of a centralized computer or mainframe with remote dumb terminals remained popular throughout the 1950s. However, it was not until the 1960s that researchers started to investigate packet switching, a technology that would allow chunks of data to be sent to different computers without first passing through a centralized mainframe. A four-node network emerged on 5 December 1969. This network would become ARPANET, which by 1981 would consist of 213 nodes. ARPANET's development centered around the request for comment process and on 7 April 1969, RFC 1 was published. This process is important because ARPANET would eventually merge with other networks to form the Internet and many of the protocols the Internet relies upon today were specified through the request for comment process. In September 1981, RFC 791 introduced the Internet Protocol V4 and RFC 793 introduced the Transmission Control Protocol, thus creating the TCP-IP protocol that much of the Internet relies upon today. However, not all important developments were made through the request for comment process. Two popular link protocols for local area networks also appeared in the 1970s. A patent for the token ring protocol was filed by Olive Soderblom on 29 October 1974 and a paper on the Ethernet protocol was published by Robert Metcalf and David Boggs in the July 1976 issue of Communications of the ACM. Key Concepts a number of key concepts reoccur throughout the literature on modern telecommunication theory and systems. Some of these concepts are discussed below. Basic elements A basic telecommunication system consists of three primary units that are always present in some form. A transmitter that takes information and converts it to a signal. A transmission medium, also called the physical channel, that carries the signal. An example of this is the free space channel, a receiver that takes the signal from the channel and converts it back into usable information. 
For example, in a radio broadcasting station the station's large power amplifier is the transmitter, and the broadcasting antenna is the interface between the power amplifier and the free space channel. The free space channel is the transmission medium, and the receiver's antenna is the interface between the free space channel and the receiver. Sometimes, telecommunication systems are duplex, with a single box of electronics working as both a transmitter and a receiver, or a transceiver. For example, a cellular telephone is a transceiver. The transmission electronics and the receiver electronics in a transceiver are actually quite independent of each other. This can be readily explained by the fact that radio transmitters contain power amplifiers that operate with electrical powers measured in the watts, or kilowatts. But radio receivers deal with radio powers that are measured in the microwatts or nanowatts. Hence, transceivers have to be carefully designed and built to isolate their high-power circuitry and their low-power circuitry from each other. Telecommunication over fixed lines is called point-to-point -point communication because it is between one transmitter and one receiver. Telecommunication through radio broadcasts is called broadcast communication because it is between one powerful transmitter and numerous low-power, but sensitive radio receivers. Telecommunications in which multiple transmitters and multiple receivers have been designed to cooperate and to share the same physical channel are called multiplex systems. The sharing of physical channels using multiplexing often gives very large reductions in costs. Multiplex systems are laid out in telecommunication networks and the multiplexed signals are switched at nodes through to the correct destination terminal receiver. Analog versus digital communications Communications signals can be sent either by analog signals or digital signals. There are analog communication systems and digital communication systems. For an analog signal, the signal is varied continuously with respect to the information. In a digital signal, the information is encoded as a set of discrete values. During the propagation and reception, the information contained in analog signals will inevitably be degraded by undesirable physical noise. Commonly, the noise in a communication system can be expressed as adding or subtracting from the desirable signal in a completely random way. This form of noise is called additive noise, with the understanding that the noise can be negative or positive at different instants of time. Noise that is not additive noise is a much more difficult situation to describe or analyze, and these other kinds of noise will be emitted here. On the other hand, unless the additive noise disturbance exceeds a certain threshold, the information contained in digital signals will remain intact. Their resistance to noise represents a key advantage of digital signals over analog signals. Telecommunication networks A communications network is a collection of transmitters, receivers, and communications channels that send messages to one another. Some digital communications networks contain one or more routers that work together to transmit information to the correct user. An analog communications network consists of one or more switches that establish a connection between two or more users. For both types of network, repeaters may be necessary to amplify or recreate the signal when it is being transmitted over long distances. This is to combat attenuation that can render the signal indistinguishable from the noise. Another advantage of digital systems over analog is that their output is easier to store in memory, i.e., two voltage states are easier to store than a continuous range of states. Communication channels The term channel has two different meanings. In one meaning, a channel is the physical medium that carries a signal between the transmitter and the receiver. Examples of this include the atmosphere for sound communications, glass optical fibers for some kinds of optical communications, coaxial cables for communications by way of the voltages and electric currents in them, and free space for communications using visible light, infrared waves, ultraviolet light, and radio waves.
This last channel is called the free space channel. The sending of radio waves from one place to another has nothing to do with the presence or absence of an atmosphere between the two. Radio waves travel through a perfect vacuum just as easily as they travel through air, fog, clouds, or any other kind of gas besides air. The other meaning of the term channel in telecommunications is seen in the phrase communications channel, which is a subdivision of a transmission medium so that it can be used to send multiple streams of information simultaneously. For example, one radio station can broadcast radio waves into free space at frequencies in the neighborhood of 94.5 MHz while another radio station can simultaneously broadcast radio waves at frequencies in the neighborhood of 96.1 MHz. Each radio station would transmit radio waves over a frequency bandwidth of about 180 kHz, centered at frequencies such as the above, which are called the carrier frequencies. Each station in this example is separated from its adjacent stations by 200 kHz, and the difference between 200 kHz and 180 kHz is an engineering allowance for the imperfections in the communication system. In the example above, the free space channel has been divided into communications channels according to frequencies, and each channel is assigned a separate frequency bandwidth in which to broadcast radio waves. This system of dividing the medium into channels according to frequency is called frequency division multiplexing. Another term for the same concept is wavelength division multiplexing, which is more commonly used in optical communications when multiple transmitters share the same physical medium. Another way of dividing a communications medium into channels is to allocate each sender a recurring segment of time, and to allow each sender to send messages only within its own time slot. This method of dividing the medium into communication channels is called time division multiplexing and is used in optical fiber communication. Some radio communication systems use TDM within an allocated FDM channel. Hence, these systems use a hybrid of TDM and FDM. Modulation The shaping of a signal to convey information is known as modulation. Modulation can be used to represent a digital message as an analog waveform. This is commonly called keying, a term derived from the older use of Morse code in telecommunications, and several keying techniques exist. The Bluetooth system, for example, uses phase shift keying to exchange information between various devices. In addition, there are combinations of phase shift keying and amplitude shift keying which is called quadrature amplitude modulation that are used in high-capacity digital radio communication systems. Modulation can also be used to transmit the information of low-frequency analog signals at higher frequencies. This is helpful because low-frequency analog signals cannot be effectively transmitted over free space. Hence the information from a low-frequency analog signal must be impressed into a higher-frequency signal before transmission. There are several different modulation schemes available to achieve this, two of the most basic being amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. An example of this process is a disc jockey's voice being impressed into a 96 MHz carrier wave using frequency modulation. In addition, modulation has the advantage that it may use frequency division multiplexing.